for all those who appreciate the work that we're doing here on Standing for Truth, please hit that subscribe button because we are just getting started. Hey everybody, this is Standing for Truth. And this video consists of the portions of my debate with Emotionally Stunted Emoticon, where we discuss LMN haplogroups and mitochondrial DNA. For the full debate, please refer to the link in the description box. I highly recommend this. We touch on many different topics and it's very engaging. In the meantime, please enjoy this video. So if you actually look at this visually here, so if you can see my arrow, what these are, and, and they're well known as, as the three major haplogroups. And I want to point out the fact that, that these lines here, so if you can see my arrow here, they all come back to a common origin and basically three different common groupings. You can see here the three groupings, okay? That's the LMN haplogroups. Um, of course, there, there's subgroups, um, but, you know, this is, this is not a, a point of dispute as even the evolutionists here themselves, they recognize this, this basic fact. So in technical terms, you know, these are the three major haplogroups, L, M, and N. Now, th this is standard evolutionary science and belief. So um, you can even watch my uh, debate with Dr. Stefan Frello, who's had a very extensive written debate with Dr. Jensen regarding these, these haplogroups. Now, where the prediction comes into play is, is because I'm defending a, a biblical creation model here. So, therefore, when we look at this mitochondrial map here, what is the maternal ancestry of the human population? So, if you look at your Bible and, and you, you, you take your, um, you open it to Genesis, what do we start with? Well, we start with Adam and Eve, who then have many children. We then move quickly here to the time of, of the flood of course, and how many female lineages survived the flood? Well, there's Noah, there's his wife. Now, Noah's wife passes on mitochondrial DNA to her sons, but what does it do? It stops there. So Noah's three sons obviously do not pass on their mitochondrial DNA, but their three wives do. So we actually trace back to three women. Now, what's actually amazing about this is the fact that it makes predictions directly from Genesis. And the relative, relative pattern we see, as we know that DNA differences are a marker of time, and that they're a marker of thousands of years, not hundreds of thousands of years, how many generations were pre-flood and how many were post-flood? Those are important questions. So as I've said, reading the Bible, reading, reading Genesis, we know that on the paternal side, there are about 1,600 years or 10 generations or so. So consisting of obviously very long lifespans, which we can actually uh, look at and confirm based on just genetic entropy and, and legends, thousands of legends. So we actually see the lifespans dropping off quite rapidly post-flood. And so we probably got, what, a, a couple hundred generations post-flood. So we, we see very little time for mutation pre-flood and longer branches post-flood. That indicates more generations and more differences slash mutations. So the mutations would also explain the long African branches here. And we're going to have emotion uh, comment on this. But we have a few potential explanations for the longer branches here that you can see. Africans could undergo a faster rate of change or even an explanation involving UN data in the 70s. And what the data told us was that women on average and Africans married early, whereas the rest of the globe, not so much. So if this was actually true historically, and that's what's important, is that Africans would have gone through twice as many, maybe three times as many generations, and therefore mutations than non-Africans. So there's been mut uh, mutation rate predictions on the Khoisan peoples. Evolutionists can make predictions as well on this mitochondrial map, but it's the creationists that are making the the predictions right from ge right from genetics. Fossils, bones found in the dirt, they're not inherited. Genes are. Traits are. And that's what we're looking at here. Go ahead there, Emotion. Um, uh, the haplogroups, you've spoken to haplogroups a long time. Um, the well, yeah, usually the, the, the common objection is that M and N were derived from L. Uh, the, most people would object to that. Um, even if I grant you that they didn't descend from, from L, that they came from a, they all three came from a common stock, um, we still have the problem of the archaic humans, um, the extinct humans that do not fall anywhere near the, um, 
DNA hopper groups we have there. Um, I've heard creationists talk about the fact that DNA tends to degrade, not genetic entropy, but the DNA itself, the molecule tends to degrade over time when an animal dies. Uh, that's okay. But um, we would have to explain why when we measure the DNA of the, the mitochondrial DNA of different specimens of Neanderthal, why they, why they tend to fall together. If DNA degrades and they, cause, they can cause inconsistent readings, why does uh, inconsistent or um, unreliable data yield consistent results? That's what we need to know. And we also need to know when did these Neanderthals went extinct because their uh, DNA, um, mitochondrial DNA falls so far off. How much time are you giving them to accumulate that difference? All right. Um, because of course the, 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 the assertion or the argument that the DNA is too degraded doesn't hold up when you actually compare all of them and realize that, well, if all of them are degraded, then, you know, again, why are you getting these consistent results? So we need to know when they died and so on, uh, the, the specimens when they died, and um, how do we get all that difference between the time? It, because they don't have 4,400 4, years as we do. We're current, we're current animals or extant animals. But if it's based on adaptive degeneration, like I said, it's not going to take your um, your microbes to man. It, it's just not going to do it. And, and we want to see empirical evidence, not ideas, wishful thinking, imagination. You can hope, dream, and imagine all day. Um, uh, let me see here what he wrote. Uh, real quick, was it the was it the Neanderthals that that was your your prime objection to Dr. Jensen's haplogroup map here? Their uh, emotion. Yeah, the uh, Neanderthals and the uh, Denisovans. Okay, so it, it's not, okay. So if you're looking at, say, these ancient, like you can even look at replacing Darwin. You can look at his, his, his the book on, on this section where he actually makes very specific predictions on fossil DNA sequences as, as you're talking about. Um, even based on genetic entry, there's a paper out that talks about Neanderthals and, and how they were susceptible to this genetic entropy based on isolation, inbreeding. You know, they had a very high genetic load. So the prediction made by Dr. Jensen that, you know, these Neanderthals are just hyper-mutating um, lineages actually does hold water. It, it actually makes a lot of sense. So the fact that these three major haplogroups are absolutely consistent with, with the biblical base model the three wives of, of Noah's sons and how all these lines go right back to, to just that LMN. I mean, this didn't have to be true under an evolutionary model, but predictions have been made on, on the most divergent of African people groups. They're making predictions on mutation rates. I want to see the evolutionists doing um, the exact same thing. And in the young earth creation model, it easily accounts for all the, the mitochondrial DNA differences among modern peoples. And Dr. Jensen's proposed explanation for Neanderthal DNA, whether it's just degradation, but we've seen in papers that they had a very high genetic load, especially immediately post Babel, you're isolated, the environments, the conditions, you can mutate fast and therefore you're going to have that excessive amount of, um, of, of degradation. Of, of mutations or even just lineage specific mutation accelerations as I'm talking about here. The thing is, you know, what emotion needs to understand is those, those flow from Dr. Jensen's explanation for modern observable mitochondrial DNA differences. And based on that model, as I've said, predictions on the rates of change in some of these sub-Saharan peoples, they've been made and therefore the evolutionists need to step up and, 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 and do the same type of thing. So, uh, you know, that, that explanation for mito, modern mitochondrial DNA differences, it, it meets the standard of, um, of testable predictive power. But the, the evolutionary model, it, it doesn't. So you can, you can nitpick all day. Um, but regard, you also said, you know, the um, Denisovan DNA uh, fast mutation rates in, in the Neanderthal and, and Denisovan lineage or, or the 
DNA degradation of these lineages as well. Um, they, at the end of the day, have been in indirectly confirmed. So I want to see, I want to see a motion here in the next response. I want to see him, if he's going to continue to reject those claims that I just made on, on Neanderthals and, and the DNA of uh, Denisovans and these, these fossil DNA sequences, I want to see him propose a better testable predictive explanation for modern, but not only modern people, ancient human DNA samples. And he needs to provide an independent test of the reliability of ancient DNA as well. Because in the experiences of scientists, geneticists, looking at DNA, even from living species, in a lab, when when stored, this 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 DNA, you can see that even beyond a year, those DNA samples, they do give unreliable and unpredictable results. So how much more caution is then warranted when dealing with DNA that is sat in an open and fluctuating environment for hundreds, if not thousands of years, such as with these Neanderthals and Denisovans? and these, these ancient human populations. So there's two explanations. They make predictions. They also flow from, from this tree that, that I gave earlier. Um, I, I want to see, see a better predictive, uh, predictable model from, from emotion 